When you launch Corel Painter Essentials 8 for the first time, you're greeted by the Welcome Book, and the Welcome Book gives you quick access to new documents, open documents, and some other things that we'll take a look at. We can navigate through the various pages of the Welcome Book over here on the left. As you can see, if I click through these different tabs, let's start up here at the top with Documents. We can create a new document, we can open documents, or we can browse a list of recent documents. There are also document templates which create standard frame and print sizes. Beneath that, we have layouts. If the Corel Painter interface, or what you see here in the application, is your desk, then layouts are going to be different arrangements of the things that are on your desk. For example, we have our color picker here, which we could move around, and we have these various palettes. Selecting one of these layouts will rearrange Corel Painter in various ways. You have drawing and painting mode which is going to isolate the drawing and painting tools. We can switch through these different modes by going to the window menu, and then we can choose a new layout here. If we choose photo painting, this reveals the photo painting tools so we can work on a photo painting. We'll go to window, layouts, tablet right-handed. If you're working on a tablet and you're right-handed, it may be useful to have your toolbar over here on the left and your layers and other palettes over here on the right. If you're left-handed, then you have the same mode just flipped around, and you have your palettes on the left and your toolbar on the right. There isn't a right or wrong way to arrange your workspace, just like there's not a right or wrong way to arrange your desk. But the basic idea of a workspace is to arrange Corel Painter the way that you like it so that you can be comfortable while you're making art. I'm going to go ahead and go back to the drawing and painting layout, and I'm going to arrange this the way that I like it. I'm going to move all of this stuff down, and of course, I have a nice big screen to work on here. If you don't have as much room, then you'll have to try to condense this down a bit. You can drag the color picker around like so. You can even make it larger or smaller if I like. And I'll move these palettes up here like so. We'll get into these palettes and stuff a little bit later, but for now, just arrange things to where you're comfortable working. You don't have to copy exactly what I've done here, and don't worry about it because you can always move this stuff around later. I'm going to double click here on the mixer to collapse this down. Same goes for harmonies, make layers a little bit bigger, and I'll go over how I'm doing all this stuff in just a bit. Now that I've modified this layout, it would be wise to go to the window menu, layouts, and then choose save layout. I'm just going to call this custom, and this will save the position of everything on my screen. If you're going to be following along with me, then I recommend that you do this. That way we're on the same page as far as the location of all of our palettes while you're working on the course. Now at any time I can load that custom layout by going to Window, Layouts, and here it is at the bottom. This is going to be very useful while we're going through this course because we're going to be making a mess of all of these palettes and we may want to reset them to a default. So if you're following along with me, go ahead and save it the way that I've arranged it here. That way we can all be on the same page. You can save multiple layouts, so if you want to save your own custom layout that's not like mine, feel free to do that as well. Let's return to the Welcome Book by going to the Help menu. And then we'll choose Welcome. The next page is What's New. And here you can get an overview of what's new in Corel Painter. I'll be mentioning these new features throughout the course. The next page is Tutorials. This has lots of great tutorials by Corel Painter Masters. And the last page is The Store. Here you can purchase brush packs for Corel Painter Essentials, and this will give you tons and tons of brushes that you can use. As you can see if you scroll through this list, there are loads of brushes. You can create fireworks, fire, clouds, fur, all kinds of stuff. You can also filter what's being shown here. For example, you could show hardware and software, or we can take a look at upgrades. For example, if you wanted to upgrade to the full version of Corel Painter 2021, there's also monthly and annual subscription options, which is new. And then if you happen to purchase any of this content, you can find that here in my library. Down at the bottom of the welcome book, we have some buttons for new brush packs. This just shows you the most recent brush packs. You can also get tech support. You can compare versions of Corel Painter. You can follow Corel Painter on Instagram. And you can watch webinars with Corel Painter Masters. If we go up to the very top of the welcome book, there's a gear icon. And we can use this to enable and disable show on startup. So if you don't want the welcome book to appear every time, just uncheck this. I'll go ahead and uncheck it. And then to close the welcome book, you can click on the X. I'm going to go to Documents, because next we're going to look at how to create a new document. There are several ways to create a new document. You could click on the New Document button here in the Documents tab. You could choose a document template, or you can go to File, New. This opens the New Image dialog, and this has been updated in Curl Painter Essentials 8. 
You can name your image. You can choose from various presets if you want to set up different widths and heights and then be able to choose from those. You can add a preset with the plus button or remove it with the delete button. You can change your unit of measurement from pixels to inches or other units here. If you're working on the web, you'll want to choose pixels. If you're printing, then you'll probably want to choose inches. I'm just going to choose pixels for now. You can select a width and a height for your artwork and a resolution. In Corel Painter Essentials 8, if you set this to inches and then you change the resolution, the resolution is no longer going to automatically change the width and height, which is really great. I'll go ahead and set it back to pixels. We can also change this from pixels per inch to pixels per centimeter, but we'll just leave it at pixels per inch. If you're wondering what you should set your resolution, width, and height to, I have a separate reference video you can watch all about that. For now, we just want to create something that's small enough to work on and just do some doodles. So we'll do 1920 by 1080. Also new in Corel Painter Essentials 8 are the orientation options, and this will allow you to flip your canvas so you can have it be portrait mode or you can have it be in landscape mode. We'll keep it at landscape mode. And then down at the bottom, we can start by toning our canvas a color. We'll just leave it as white for now. And we can add a paper texture. We'll be coming back to what this does in a little bit. Let's go ahead and click on OK, and this will create our new canvas. The canvas we created appears here in our user interface or UI. And as I mentioned earlier, this is like your desk. And then all of these different things that are on your desk can be used to create art. Let's start by taking a look at how to navigate the user interface and how to move the canvas around. One way to do it is to use the tools in the toolbar. For example, we have this hand, which is called the grabber tool. If we select that and then we place our little hand over the canvas, we can tap and hold with our pen or click and hold with the mouse and we can drag this around, just like we could drag around a piece of paper on a desk. If we lift up, the paper will stay put. We can also change the view of our canvas by making it appear closer or farther away using the magnifier. Once the magnifier tool is selected, we can drag to the right to zoom in or drag to the left to zoom out. This is not making your canvas larger or smaller, it's changing the distance that you're viewing it from. So right now I'm viewing my canvas from farther away or at 20%. I could zoom back in closer to 100% and then now we're much closer to the canvas. We can also rotate the canvas with the rotate page tool. If I tap and hold or click and hold on the canvas and drag, I can rotate the orientation of the canvas. It'll snap back into place once you get it upright like that. If it is a little bit askew like that, you can double click on the rotate page tool to put it back upright. An even faster way to do this rather than clicking on the toolbar is to use the keyboard shortcuts for these tools. For example, G is the grabber tool shortcut so I can grab the canvas. Another way to do this is to have the brush tool selected and then hold spacebar on your keyboard and that invokes the grabber tool. I can press M for the magnifier tool and I can press E to get the rotate page tool. An even better way to move your canvas around is to use touch if your tablet supports it. I'll go ahead and enable touch and then now I can rotate my page by placing two fingers on the page and just rotating my hand like so. I can zoom in and out by pinching my fingers closer together or spreading them farther apart. And I can use two fingers just to move the page around very naturally. If I double tap with two fingers, then I'm gonna put the canvas upright and zoom it to fill the screen. I'll go ahead and bring it back down so it's a bit smaller. And as if there weren't enough ways to navigate your canvas, we can also use the navigator panel. We can locate that by going to the window menu and then we'll choose navigator. We'll go ahead and move that over here so it's in its own little space. As you can see in the navigator panel, there are buttons to zoom out or zoom in. You can also click on this little triangle here to get a slider that you can use. You could set a numeric value such as 50% or 25%. You can also control the rotation here as well. And you can see the width, height, and resolution of your artwork, as well as the coordinates of your mouse when they're on your canvas. In order to understand what the navigator is doing, let's put something on the canvas. We'll just choose the brush tool here. We'll click on the brush selector. We'll just choose the first category, acrylics and oils, broad cover brush. You can choose any old color other than white here by clicking in the color picker. And I'll just paint a test stroke that has an up arrow like this. You can see our artwork is mirrored in the navigator. And now if I go through here and I use my touch navigation to move this around, you can see that that red box represents my view of the canvas. 
So this can be really useful if you're zoomed in very closely doing detail work and you want to be able to see a smaller version of your artwork. At this point in the course, we don't really need the navigator panel, so we'll go ahead and just close that. We can go to the window menu and we can hide the navigator. While we have the brush tool selected here, I'll give you a quick overview of the brush tool. When the brush tool is selected, that's telling Corel Painter that you want to paint on the canvas. If you have a different tool selected, you're not going to be able to apply paint. Let's make some test strokes on our canvas. You can use a mouse or you can use a drawing tablet. I'm using a drawing tablet. So I can simply press my pen down onto the tablet and just keep holding it down to make a mark. If I press really lightly, then I'm going to get a really light faint mark and I may be able to control the line width or the line opacity to get something that looks a lot like chalk. If we want to clear out these test strokes, there is an eraser tool or you may be able to use the eraser on the back of your pen, but there is a faster way to do it. We can go to the select menu, choose select all, and then press backspace on our keyboard. This will clear the contents of that layer and deselect the selection. Select all has a keyboard shortcut and that is control A. So to clear your canvas quickly, just press control A and then backspace. Now, if you're not able to get pen pressure like this, it could be for a number of reasons. You'll want to make sure you've installed the software driver in order for your computer to be able to recognize the tablet. If it's a Wacom tablet like mine, you can find those on Wacom's website. Another reason could be that you're not pressing down hard enough. If you have a very, very light touch, you might not see anything at all. So try pressing down harder. You're not going to break your pen by pressing down hard with it. It's meant to be drawn with. You may also be using a brush that doesn't utilize pen pressure, so you may want to try using a different brush. You can also go to your Wacom tablet properties select your device, select your pen. You could choose either all applications or you can set specific applications. So if you wanted this to only work with Corel Painter, you'd wanna click on the plus button here and then choose Corel Painter. And then under pen, you can set the tip feel, which controls the sensitivity of the pen pressure. I tend to press down really hard when I draw, so I have it set a notch toward firm. If you press harder, then you'll wanna set it toward firm. If you tend to press lighter, you'll wanna set it toward soft. You may wanna try some different settings. Go back to Corel Painter, try your pen again. Maybe even select a very specific brush, let's say Pen's Smooth Pen. This one does a really good job at sensing pen pressure. So I'm pressing lightly, and now I'm pressing really hard. You should be able to get a really nice smooth transition. It shouldn't be jumpy from wide to thin. And you shouldn't be struggling to get really thin lines or really thick lines. I'm going to use my keyboard shortcut control A and then backspace to clear my canvas. You'll also want to be able to get this nice tapering. So if I just vary my pen pressure going from light to heavy to light, then I can get these nice tapered lines of various widths. Now that we know how to use our pen on a basic level, we can move on to look at some of the other things that we can do. Instead of using this keyboard shortcut of control A and backspace, if I happen to have express keys on my tablet, or in this case, a Wacom express key remote, then I can set these buttons on the express key remote to select all and backspace. Or if you have something like a stream deck or something that can do multiple actions per button, then you can make a button that does select all and backspace together. Currently my express keys are just set up to do different things for when I'm recording. So this isn't actually how I would use it for Corel Painter but I do have a layout specifically for Corel Painter. If you're interested in that, I have a PDF you can download with some suggestions for what to set these express keys to. As you can see, I'm using a Windows computer, but if you're on Mac, in Corel Painter Essentials 8, you can now use the trackpad and the touch bar to do various things. For example, the trackpad will let you do basic navigation stuff. The touch bar will allow you to control sliders. And there's even sidecar support and Apple Pencil Tilt support, which will allow you to tilt your Apple Pencil to change the shape of the brush. I can't show you any of that because I don't have a Mac, but you can feel free to try it out at home. Next, we'll move on to take a look at document view mode. We can find that from the window menu. And down here at the bottom, we have single document view, which we can toggle on or off. Right now it's enabled. If I disable it, then you can see that my canvas appears in a floating window. This can be useful if you have multiple pieces of artwork open and you want them all to be showing at the same time. I tend to only work on one canvas at a time, so I like to maximize this window and just show one document. You can also put your canvas into a window in Windows by clicking on the Restore Down button. That just makes it go back and forth. Now, if you're working on a Mac, you may find that you can see through to your desktop 
and that may or may not be distracting, so you'll want to go ahead and use single document view mode. Also in the window menu is presentation mode, and the shortcut for that is F11. If we enter presentation mode, we get a little warning that says that we're going to enter presentation mode. Now this is very important. You need to know that if you enter presentation mode, you're going to get stuck there forever unless you know the magic shortcut, which is F11. If we want, we can disable this warning and we'll just click on OK. So now if I just hit F11, I can go in and out of this mode. And you can see that what it does is it just hides the application bar and the file menu. And it just gives you a little bit more room on your screen. They call this presentation mode because if you were presenting your artwork to the client and you wanted to have the application in the background, but have it still look kind of nice, then there you go, presentation mode. But we can go farther than this. We can also show and hide the user interface. We can do that by pressing tab on the keyboard. And when we do that, you can see that all of these extra panels disappear. The only thing that's left is the color picker. I'll hit tab to bring back my palettes. You can also hold shift and press tab, and that will hide just these palettes here. So you have tab to hide everything, or shift tab just to hide the palettes. I'll also exit out of presentation mode. Now let's take a more in-depth look at some of these palettes here. We'll start with the anatomy of palettes. Palettes are this whole rectangle here, or this box containing various features and commands. We can drag it around by this top bar to reposition it. We can drag these three buttons at the bottom to show more of the content within the palette. But essentially, a palette is just a container. Within that container are panels, and panels are the various types of content or features within that palette. So here's the color set panel, the mixer panel, the harmonies panel. I can click on these tabs to switch between them, or I can double click on them to collapse them or expand them. I can drag their position to rearrange them, or I can even separate them from the palette altogether to put them into their own palettes. And I can rearrange this however I like. I could have my color together like this. It could be separate from my layers. And if I wanted it to be over here, I could put it over here. I'll go ahead and put everything back. In order to rearrange these palettes, you want to drag from the tab and then look for that blue line. That's going to show you the insertion point. So if I want it to be above this other panel, or if I want it to be next to it, then I'll drag it so the blue line is next to that. Now I can switch between the two. If I want to combine these two palettes, I can just drag layers into here, and now they're all together. As I showed you earlier, you can also drag around the color picker. This is sort of a palette, as is the toolbox over here. You can drag that around, and you can even drag the brush selector, and you can separate all of these different elements. So you could have this be down here, and if you want to dock it, which means you attach it to the interface, you drag down until you see that blue highlight, and now this properties bar has been attached to the bottom. If I want to attach the brush selector to the bottom, I could do that as well. There are some limitations for where you can attach things. For example, if I try to put the properties bar over on the right or left, I can't. And you'll know that you can't because you can see that nice red line saying, no way, buddy. So we'll go ahead and just put that back up at the top where it goes. Same goes for the brush selector. When we have something that's docked or not docked, then that just means that it's attached or not attached to the user interface. So if I put this application into windowed mode, you can see that because this palette is not docked, it's just staying fixed, even if I move the application around. In fact, none of these palettes are docked. But if I drag the toolbox and dock it into the user interface, now it stays put. I could drag this over and dock this. You're not able to dock the color picker, so we'll just have that float over here. This does add a bar over here in the middle, which is used to kind of scroll around on your desk or your canvas background. If you don't like that being there, then you'll want to take everything back out. Unfortunately, you'll have to put it all back together like this, or you could just go to Window, Layouts, and just reset that workspace. That puts that bar way over on the side where it doesn't really bother you as much, but you can set it up however you like. That brings us to the end of this lesson. Coming up on the next part, we'll take a look at some of the basics of working with Painter, such as selecting brushes and choosing color.